Well, hello friends, Scott from Platte River Keto. If you're new to my channel, welcome. On my channel, you get to come along for the ride on my keto journey. Check in with you once a week to update you on my keto progress, and I try to check in with you at least one other day during the week, usually to share something that I've discovered about the ketogenic lifestyle, but occasionally to share a little something that I've discovered about this journey that we call life. Today is Saturday, which means that it's a check-in day. So I'm going to go over my goals with you guys. I have a little something that I wanted to share with you this week, something that I've discovered, I suppose, um, about the ketogenic lifestyle, or more accurately, probably about myself. But uh, let's get right to it. So let's talk about the goals. Um, the goals that I have, for those of you who have been following along, uh, first is to get in my DDPY workout daily. I did that this week, did a great job on that this week, uh, feeling really good. I've actually got my better half, uh, Liz, to start joining me in those workouts. She didn't hit every day this week, but she did a pretty good job of joining in. That's really fun uh, to get to do that together. And, uh, you know, I've been doing it for a while, so she joins in with me, and if she needs to take a break, she takes a break. And uh, if I'm doing a longer workout and she wants to be done, then she's done. But uh, it's great having her along uh, for that ride with me. So got in, got in all seven days of DDPY workouts this week, feeling really good. Just about finished with the beginner program again, so that's great. And yeah, just moving right along on DDPY. It's been really good. Um, my next goal, I'm going to kind of shove it in between the goals that I've had. I talked to you guys about this, is my weight training program. I started a weight training program, a 30-day weight training program. Got every day done this week. Uh, I'm intentionally taking Sundays off, but it's a 30-day program, so I finished day nine this morning. And uh, as my wife made me this really cool shirt, it says, Batman never skips leg day. Uh, today was leg day, which was funny because I did my DDPY workout, and there were certainly plenty of legs involved in that. Then uh, Liz and I took the dogs for a walk, and then it was leg day uh, with weightlifting. So it was, uh, it was intense, and I was... Uh, Definitely ready to be done by the time the workout was over, but I uh, got that done. Like I said, I'm through nine days of the 30-day program there with the weights, so did that every day this week. Woohoo! Um, next, getting a walk-in daily. I have definitely been doing that. Um, for those of you who've been following along on my Facebook page, uh, you will know that yesterday Liz was feeling a little tired, um, and the reason she was actually feeling tired was because she was worried about our dog, and I was too. Uh, but she didn't get very much sleep. She actually woke up at 2.30 in the morning to go check on our dog, and she said she never really got back to sleep. And so yesterday, uh, that was yesterday, so Thursday night, actually Thursday kind of in the afternoon, uh, Ember just seemed sluggish. She wasn't kind of getting up, and she just didn't seem like herself. Uh, I kind of joked with Liz that Ember seemed like more like the dog sometimes we wish she was, like really calm, easily to be petted and all that kind of thing. Um, having said that, we missed it really quickly and we knew something was maybe not right. So we took her into the vet, um, on Friday morning and they said she was anemic, which could mean a lot of not awesome things. Dr. Google, uh, thought for sure she was dying. Um, and I don't know for sure still, but, uh, anyway, the vet gave us some antibiotics and some other medications and, uh, the fantastic news is I'd like to thank those of you who do follow along on my Facebook page for your prayers, uh, for my dog. I really feel like they helped, and Ember this morning was back to her absolutely happy-go-lucky, crazy self, the, the dog that we can barely keep up with when we go for a walk, so um, very, very thankful for that, but uh, yeah, sorry for the little aside there, but uh, I just, I'm thankful for you guys, for those who follow along, like I said on my Facebook page, you would have seen a post about that, about being concerned about my dog, Ember is uh, about five years old, and uh, I love her, she's my puppy. She's 107 pounds, uh, by the way, when we took her to the vet, so she's a big dog, but uh, she is seemingly doing better today uh, on her medication. I think that's helping. I hope that's helping. We're going to take her in. As long as she continues to feel better, we're not going to take her in uh, for another eight weeks, but they're going to check her um, her blood, level, blood work to see if her anemia is better, which we knock on wood hope it is, because if it's not, there aren't really very many good outcomes from that but uh, anyway so got my walks in this week that was really good and it felt really great this morning to be back walking with both of my dogs uh, yesterday I was walking with just Luna and uh, and yeah Miss Denver so it's nice to have her back and doing well um, next goal was to uh, keep with my month of OMAD which is one meal a day I done done great with that this week did that every day this week really feeling good with that um as James from Ready, Set, Keto said, one of the biggest things that OMAD seems to help me with anyway is it just cuts out the snacking because you're only eating during that one hour um, feasting window. And so it makes it really, really easy to 
not snack because you're not eating for the rest of the day. And you know, it's amazing our bodies, the human body, how much easier, how, how easy things are, how, how easily adjustable our body is. I've gotten used to OMAD pretty quickly. I feel really good. I don't mind eating, but once a day and I, occasionally I get a little bit hungry, but I, I just, it's really not that hard and it didn't take that long to make that adjustment. So I don't know if I'm going to stick with this forever. Uh, this is definitely a month long experiment and uh, we'll see how it goes. So there we go. Uh, but yes, did that every day this week. Uh, next, uh, well, no snacking on specific days, of course, is related to the OMAD. Not snacking because I'm only eating once a day. Uh, the next is the weight goal. And as you guys know, st uh, started last week for the next four weeks, I actually changed that to make a goal to not be on the scale for four weeks. And as promised, my wife hid the scale. I'm glad that she did because I was tempted to get on the scale this week. Even if I wasn't going to share that number with you, I still wanted to see where I was at. And I'm glad that I didn't because this has been an interesting experiment. Um, finally, getting my Bible study in. I did that every day this week and I'm feeling really good about that. But the thing that I wanted to talk with you guys about this week, though, the thing that I found uh, was really interesting for me was actually related to the scale. And I'm going to kind of entitle it what I learned about the scale. Um... What I learned about the scale was that even though I didn't think I was obsessing about the scale, I kind of was. And it it was interesting because I got to about Thursday, Friday of this week, and as I just mentioned to you guys, I had been doing a really good job of reaching all of my goals, and I was getting my workouts in and eating the way that I wanted to eat and eating the foods that I wanted to eat. And I realized that about Thursday, Friday of every week, I get, I'd been getting a little nervous is the wrong term, but like anxious about getting on the scale. And it's like, is the scale going to say the right thing for me this week? And so I first thought about taking this little break from the scale as, boy, that's really good to get over that anxiety of the scale telling me that I didn't do a good job this week, even though I did everything that I wanted to do, even though I hit all of my goals. And then I actually got to thinking this morning as I was uh, exercising, I have time to think, I was thinking about the, how the reverse of that is actually true as well. And what I mean by that is, not only do have I had weeks, and obviously last week was the impetus for going on this scale break, was that I had a really good week and the scale didn't really move and that kind of ticked me off. And I knew that I, I wanted to keep focused on my processes, so I wanted to kind of get rid of the scale. But the other side has been equally true as I actually thought back over the last two years. There have been weeks where I haven't done a great job with my processes. Either I haven't gotten my workouts in like I wanted to, or I haven't eaten the things that I wanted to, or I snacked more than I wanted to, and yet Saturday comes, I get on the scale, and it's like, woo, down four pounds! And that's actually interesting because it reinforces the uh, lack of good habits or the bad habits that I had from that particular week. And it's like, well, even though I didn't get my workouts in this week, I lost four pounds, so maybe I don't need to get my workouts in every week. Or... Even though I snacked more than I should have, I lost four pounds, so I can snack more than, than I want to. So I thought that was interesting. The, the scale for me, again, has been more of a thing than I thought that it was. And what I learned is, by taking a little break from it and really focusing on my processes, like that's what I want to do. I want to focus on the, the goals... Goals is the wrong term because these are the processes that I put in place. To get a workout in the morning, to get up every morning, go have a workout, to limit my eating to one meal a day where I put my calories in. That's the processes that I put in place that I think will lead to my success. And the only way to test that is to focus on those processes and kind of forget about my goals. There's actually, <clears throat> I'm not sure if it's in Atomic Habits, but there's another book that I read called The Motivation Myth. And it's one of the things, I don't agree with everything the guy says in the book. He actually has his own way of losing weight that I think is kind of dumb, to be honest. But uh, one of the things that I definitely agree with in his book is he talks about how we should set our goals and then kind of forget about our goals because really the goal is the is a way to measure our progress but what's going to actually get us our progress is the processes that we put in, in place for ourselves getting a workout in every day you know limiting myself not snacking eating once a day all those things that I've set for myself those are the things that I really should focus on and if I do all of those things those are the things that are inside of my control. My relationship with Earth's gravity is sort of inside of my control, but there are factors, there are things in, that happen, I think, sometimes 
that can cause us to either feel really great when we didn't have a great week or have us feel really frustrated when we did have a great week and did do all the things that we want to. Now, over time, I have absolute confidence that if I'm doing the things that I want to be doing, that I'm going to see that trend downward like I would like it to be. But in the short term, there can be those blips and things that I don't have any control over. And yet, if I'm letting the scale rule my life, it can ruin my week. And like I said, that's what I found out last week. That's how I was feeling. And so it's been a really good experiment for me because I got to Friday and, you know, especially this morning as I'm walking with Liz, like in the last few weeks, I'd, I would have had this anxiety sort of about like, so is the scale going to gonna bear out the fact that I had a really good week this week, that I did everything that I wanted to do? Is the scale going to tell me that I did a good job? The scale is my relationship with Earth's gravity. I've said it repeatedly over these two years, but that's all it is, guys. And I know, as I'm taking that walk with Liz this morning, and she and I are even talking, I know that I had a great week. I know that I did all the things that I wanted to do exactly the way that I wanted to do them, and I think that's fantastic. Now, do I think that my relationship with Earth's gravity is going to bear that out here in four weeks? I do. And the caveat here is, if it doesn't for some reason, then I can take a look at the goals, uh, the processes. I, I gotta keep saying goals, but it's not really goals. The processes that I put in place for myself every day and go, maybe something needs to be different. And again, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Of course we can. Uh, we will. We can't cross it before we get there. But in the meantime, I have confidence that these things are going to work, that they're going to be uh, impactful in a good way for me. I know, uh, as I mentioned to you guys last week, that starting weight training can cause a little bit of weight gain in the short term. But in the long term, I'm going to be better off having more muscle uh, mass. I'm, I'm going to be better. I'm going to be more healthy. So yeah, that's what I wanted to share with you guys this week. I, I know that we all, a lot of us, I should say, in this keto sphere talk a lot about the scale and how the scale can be uh, definitely something that sabotages us, but I hadn't really experienced it uh, personally until this week. And so that's what I learned this week. And I hope that you guys can take that and find that to be something useful for yourselves. Maybe it's not an issue for you, but for me, I was surprised that it was more of an issue than I thought it would be. And the other thing, uh, again, that I would say to you and that I'm saying definitely to myself is that as I continue these four weeks, just because I'm not weighing does not mean that I'm not focused on my processes. I think that many times, and I am definitely, I have definitely been guilty of this as I've been on this journey for the last two years, you take a, a time period where you say, you know, I'm not going to weigh myself and that's an excuse to go grab a handful of almonds that I don't that I don't find to be good for me. Go grab an extra keto treat, all that sort of thing, because I don't have that accountability with the scale. Well, I'm keeping myself accountable right now by really focusing, hyper-focusing on these processes. And then I do have my weekly check-in with you all. And so I know that at the end of the week, I want to be able to say to you, I had seven days of DDPY workouts. I had seven days, or every day, I should say, because I do six days, of my weight training program. I had seven days where I walked this week. I had seven days where I ate one meal a day. I want to be able to say that to you, and I think by focusing on those processes that I will have the success that I want to in my relationship with Earth's gravity. So, yep, that's what I wanted to share with you guys this week. I hope you've enjoyed this. If it's been helpful to you, please uh, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, hit the bell icon so that you'll be notified the next time I share with you guys. Keep calm and keto on. Have a fantastic week. We'll talk to you guys again soon.